I am Dr. Benin. In this video, I am going to teach about the primary retention form. This is the fifth part in Fundamentals of Tooth Preparation series. If you haven't seen the previous parts, kindly go back and watch the previous videos. This video will be useful for students who find it difficult to understand Fundamentals of Tooth Preparation. Being one of the important topic, it is essential for dental students to understand the concepts of tooth preparation. If you are a dentist or a dental student watching this video, subscribe to my channel Smart Learning. I will make videos that will be useful for dental students, budding dentists and clinicians every week. Give your comments and if you like this video, give a thumbs up. As we know, tooth preparation can be divided into two stages, the initial and the final stage. We have already seen about the first and second step in tooth preparation. In this video, we are going to see about the third step in tooth preparation that is primary retention form. As usual, before going into the topic, look into these two pictures. The first preparation has a narrow occlusal area and wider pulpal floor. And in the second picture, we can see the opposite. We are filling these two cavity preparations with a restorative material. And the patient is chewing some food which is quite sticky. Now the sticky food will try to remove the restoration we made from the cavity preparation. If the restoration moves from the cavity, then we failed in providing a good restoration. So our cavity preparation should be in such a form and shape which will prevent the dislodgement of the restoration. This design characteristics is called primary retention form. Thus, a primary retention form is defined as that the shape or form of the conventional preparation that resists displacement or removal of the restoration from tipping or lifting forces. There are so many different restorative materials used in dentistry. No two material has the similar properties. So the cavity preparation for each material is going to be different. In this part, we will see the most common methods of retention of restorative materials to tooth surface. First, let's see about amalgam restoration. The tooth preparation for amalgam restoration is typical. We prepare the cavity with a narrow occlusal area and a wider pulpal floor. Inside the cavity, when amalgam is in a semi-solid state, it is condensed, burnished, carved, and allowed to set. Once it sets hard, the hardened material cannot come out of the narrow occlusal area. Thus it gets locked inside the tooth. During masticatory forces or with sticky foods trying to lift or dislodge the restoration, it will still remain retained within the cavity. This type of retention is called mechanical retention. So in short, Mechanical retention is given for amalgam restorations. Here we prepare a cavity where the occlusal surface is narrow compared to the pulpal floor. So mechanical retention is the first form of retaining restorative materials inside the cavity preparation. Now let's move on to the next type of primary retention form. In this example, we can see a tooth with a decay. Let's magnify and see only the area of interest. We can see the carious occlusal surface. Here we prepared a cavity. No occlusal convergence or undercut is provided as we have given for amalgam restoration. It is then restored with a composite restorative material. After a few days, the restoration got removed from the prepared cavity under masticatory forces. The reason behind it was there is no mode of retention employed. So in order to provide retention, we should follow the second strategy in primary retention form. So instead of doing the restoration directly after tooth preparation, a etching acid, namely 37% phosphoric acid is applied on the prepared tooth surface for a specific time period. This acid will remove some of the inorganic components in the tooth surface, thus creating an irregularity or micro irregularities in the tooth structure. 
the acid is then washed with water and the tooth surface is moist dried this micro irregularities loss of inorganic components from the tooth surface is the reason for frosty white appearance of tooth after acid etching a dentin bonding agent containing a primer and adhesive is applied onto this etched tooth surface and the light cured now the tooth surface is ready to bond with composite restoration because the bonding agent penetrates deep inside the etched tooth surface and making the tooth compatible for bonding with composite a composite restoration placed on top of this etched and bonded tooth surface bonds the tooth with very high bond strength and cannot be removed under masticatory forces so in short phosphoric acid creates micro irregularities and the bonding agent penetrates inside these micro irregularities and composite is applied on top of this tooth surface this type of retention is called as micro mechanical retention all composite restorations are retained on the tooth surface by micro mechanical retention remember this is the second form of primary retention now let's move on to the third type of retention of restorative material in this type the restorative material is mixed and placed in the prepared tooth no specialized cavity design is given neither any bonding procedure is done but make sure that the restoration has a shiny appearance before placement inside the prepared cavity here the restorative material will chemically bond to the tooth structure gac restoration is retained to the tooth by chemical adhesion the bond strength which is formed is definitely lower than micromechanical retention as we saw in composite but in most circumstances this is adequate to retain the restoration inside the prepared cavity the chemical adhesion is the third form of primary retention of restorative material so the common types of retention of restorative materials are mechanical retention as an amalgam micro mechanical retention as in composite restoration and chemical retention as in glass ionomer cement restorations there is another group of restoration available which is called as cast metal restorations here we prepared the cavity with minimally diverging occlusal walls unlike amalgam restoration and still restoration will be retained in the cavity preparation those who have no idea about this cast metal restoration or indirect restoration let me explain in short a cavity is prepared with 2 to 5 degrees occlusal divergence the prepared cavity is then filled with inlay wax this wax will pick up the shape of the cavity this wax pattern is then attached to a sprue and it is sent to a dental laboratory a dental technician will do a casting procedure and convert this wax into a metal by a last wax technique the metal is then trimmed finished polished and sent to the dentist the dentist will check for the fit of this restoration in the tooth and then it is fixed in the tooth with a looting material like zinc phosphate cement glass ionomer cement or a resin cement here there is no mechanical retention provided like amalgam no micro mechanical retention provided like composite or no chemical adhesion provided like gic the still the restoration will be retained in the cavity this can be primarily attributed to frictional resistance provided by almost parallel walls in the cavity preparation other than that the looting cement like zinc phosphate or gic can get mechanically locked into the small irregularities present between the tooth preparation and the restoration thus enhancing retention also if a resin cement is used for looting it can bond micro mechanically to the tooth surface and also to the restoration thus 
multiple form of retention can be employed for a cast restoration thus it cannot be definitely always told that one type of retention is adequate for a specific restorative material sometimes more than one type of retention techniques are employed to retain the restoration the retention provided in initial tooth preparation is adequate in most circumstances but because of extensive decay or inadequate remaining tooth structure additional retention may be needed in some cases if it is needed it can be provided in the final stage of tooth preparation i hope this is adequate to understand about the primary retention form we'll continue with the convenience form in the next video thank you for watching